Today we are going to save about 100 euros in some gauges for the water or fuel tanks of our boat. Greetings sailors and welcome to a new episode of the Low Cost Sailor. In today's episode we are going to learn how to install level gauges for any of the tanks of our boat. In my case I have installed a pair in the freshwater tanks but the procedure and the devices are the same for any of the boat's tanks such as the fuel tank. And some of you will not believe it but for today's episode you don't need Wi-Fi. It's going to be the old fashioned way with those needle gauges that will give us the level and that we will install on our instrument panel. Retro, isn't it? Very retro, with a gauge but electronic. All this spending about 30 euros, more or less the half of what it would cost in a nautical store the devices and much less than what it would cost to have it installed by a professional. That's sure, I do not say that not. It would do it better than us. A greeting for all the installers, do not hate me, I am not going to deceive you. The level gauges are not a fundamental instrument either, but when I saw all those modern boats that have all those level gauges on the tanks, I was a little bit envious. If you don't have one in the fuel tank, maybe it is an essential element. And having two freshwater tanks that only had a little window to look out of, and not much to see through it to know how full they were, so I decided to mount one. In terms of comfort, they are really comfortable and will be able to save you from some uncomfortable situations where you don't want to run out of water. And in an offshore sailing trip, make sure you have enough water so that you don't face a survival situation a little bit uncomfortable. Don't get too close, don't get too close. But let's see what we'll need. Let's start with the shopping. To get our installation up and running, we are going to need two fundamental parts. The level sensor itself, which will be the piece that goes inside the tank and that we will buy the right height for our tank. So, before buying the sensor, we will measure the height of our tank and we will choose the most adjusted to our height, which will always have to be a little smaller than the height available. I have chosen some of very good quality and vertical float finish, which seem to me to be the most reliable as they have no mechanical parts beyond the float itself and are identical to those that you can find in any nautical store, but cost about half as much on AliExpress. Mine cost about 10 euros each. The next fundamental piece is the display. Here there are to choose colors, graphics or even with digital numeric display. I have chosen one of those quite elegant needle ones, matching the color of the boat. It is white. The most important thing to keep in mind is that there are two standards for these sensors from 0 to 190 ohms or from 240 to 33 ohms and that both the sensor and the gauge will have to correspond to the same standard. I screwed up the first time I took the lever from 0 to 190 and the gauge from 240 to 33. So when I got them they were reading very very strange things. And that's the main reason why I have two controlled tanks because I had to buy the opposite set of 0 to 190 for the gauge and 240 to 33 for the sensor. And additionally we will need enough cable, two wires can work well like telephone cable but I recommend, as in other occasions, that you use UTP cable of 8 wires. Surely we will also need a switch if we want to activate or deactivate them independently to our pleasure. Although they consume really little, with what you can also connect it directly to the you can also connect it directly to the switch of the main pressure pump. A few tools as well, which will include a drill and a crown. A crown of about 54 centimeters. A crown for the drill. A crown to make holes with the drill. Well now we just have to wait a couple of weeks and everything will arrive. It's been a couple of weeks and all the stuff has arrived. Basically we have received two pieces. 
A small box with the indicator gauge and an elongated package with the level sensor itself, which created some laughs in the office when they saw it wrapped. <laughs> it was a bit a bit oddly shaped package. Well, strange. Well, a package shape. The level sensor comes quite protected. If you look at the sensor, it comes with the installation gasket and five stainless steel screws. If we remove the protections, we see that it looks very good. It seems to be of good quality and all the finishing is in stainless steel. Being the only mobile piece, the float that with the level of the liquid will move between its maximum and minimum position, indicating the filling level at all times. In addition, we have another small box in which what we have is the gauge clock. They are available in different graphics and colors, depending on whether we want to use them for water, fuel, etc. What we really have to pay attention to is, as we already said in purchases, if we have bought the sensor of the 0190 ohm standard, the indicator also corresponds to the same standard, as it is also corresponds to the same standard, as you can see on the labels. In the end, I have one of each type, because I made a mistake in the first purchase, and then I have the second level gauge of 24033, but as they are independent, there is no problem. Each one works with its partner. And before installing anything, let's check and see how it all works to understand it all clearly. We have our gauge clock that's here which has four wires and our wiring diagram which is actually quite clear this time. As long as we read it in the English version, not the English version, not the Chinese version. So we have the red power between 9 and 32 volts, you have to put it in here. The black one, the signal, we will connect it to the brown one of our gauge. And the blue, which will be the ground, which will actually be connected to the negative of our battery and also to the blue of the gauge. Also to the blue of the gauge. Having this clear, let's see how it works. Orange will see you later on, but orange is the backlighting that we'll see how it works. So we're going to start with this. We're going to take and we're going to use our power bank with our mini power supply. The red one to the positive of the battery. The two blue ones we're going to connect between them and we're going to connect them to the negative of the battery. And now the signal one, which is the black one of the gauge clock, we are going to connect it to the brown of the sensor. With this it would be basically all connected. And if we take and connect the power from the power bank, we see that it starts up. Now if the level varies, then the level on the sensor varies. From maximum to minimum. And it gives us any measurement in between. Really simple to connect. The cable that was loose, the orange one, can be connected to the power supply and as you can see, it lights up. But obviously, you can also keep moving the bar and it will continue to work perfectly. Jaja, <laughs> where that hand came from? With everything tested and understood, let's go with the installation. Let's start with the installation of the sensor first. We will locate the top of our tank. Hopefully there will already be a ready-made location for the gauge with 5 holes corresponding to the SAE standard that our gauge meets. If not, we will have to drill a hole of the appropriate size. In our case, we already had a window for a mechanical gauge that we will remove and clean the place where it was going. Now it should be as simple as checking that the holes are aligned with the ones we already had which in our case it looks like they are not. So we will have to make some new holes and reuse others. When drilling the holes, be very careful. If it is a fuel tank, especially gasoline, and it is metal, the risk is very high. You would have to empty the tank very well, ventilate it so that there are no gases inside it, and then you could start working. If it is like mine fiber for water, you can make the holes with more tranquility. Although I recommend you to empty the tank in order to be able to suck the, the shavings that may fall into it or put a tupper floating underneath it so that the water is not contaminated. Once the holes are made, we can cover the old ones with silicone although the gasket will be in charge to cover them in well in any case. We put the sensor in place and put the screws. In my case I have chosen to put them with screw and nut because the other side is easily accessible through the cover. Otherwise, especially if it is metallic, I would have made a thread in the holes so as not to need nuts. Or I would have used stainless lac screws if the tank is made of fiber and I don't have much room to put it in. 
Now it's time to lay the line. As always on old boats, quite an odyssey. If you're lucky, there will be some cable guides that will take everything to the switch panel and stuff. But honestly, I don't think you're going to have any. I've looked for a route that leads from the switch panel to one of the tanks and from that tank to the next tank. For the cabling, I'm going to use 8-wire UTP cable because once I have to find a way to take a cable from one corner of the ship to another, it is better to leave the rest of the wires for possible additional inventions I will make in the future. To pass the guides, you will have to use all kinds of tricks. My basic tricks for passing cables through the boat are the traditional cable guide. That works great when there is pipe already in place. An extendable selfie stick for completely straight paths. You can use it to pass the cables. Roll of fine cord and vacuum cleaner. I had to use this trick to pass the cable through the huge gap between the tank and the hull. The tank and the hull. The gap is so big that the flexible guide coiled up and did not reach. The vacuum cleaner attracted very well the thread that was loose and in the end it captured it and I could pass the cable through. Thin wire coil and nut. This works very well when gravity is on our side. If you have to run a cable vertically, this will help us a lot. And finally, with the same roll of thread and nut, we can use a magnet and with the magnet, we can push the nut through any place we have left. With all these gadgets, there will be no route on the boat that escapes us. It was hard for us to find our way and we had to make some holes, but in the end, we managed to reach the two destinations we had planned. But in the end, we managed to reach the two destinations we were aiming for. Finally, we have the cable from the two gauges to the control panel, and on top of that, we have four wires left over for possible extensions and additional devices that we can think of to put in the future and that we will think of. Looking for the right place for the indicators, I have decided that I am going to put them on the side of the switch panel. With the cable already in place, it is time to use the crown. The famous crown of 40 millimeters that was the one I had, and then as it was a little bit small, I had to go over it with the Dremel for the millimeter I was missing. We put the gauges in the holes and we tightened them with its support. We connect the wires as we saw in the diagram using one of the pairs for each clock and the power supply to somewhere in the boat's battery. I have chosen to connect them to the output of the pressure pump switch so that whenever I have the pressure pump activated on the control panel, the gauges are also working because in the end they use up a lot of power. But you can choose to put your own switch or a push button if you only want them to be activated when you want to use them. And with that we would have everything working. When I turn on the pressurized water, the indicators are connected and show me the level. They also have a cable for the backlight that I decided not to connect them because in the end you don't use them at night or at least I'm not going to look in the middle of the night. Is there enough water to go to the toilet or to take a shower? To the toilet. To the toilet. And also that makes them consume even less. The truth is that, although it is not a fundamental instrument, to know the level of the water tanks is a really useful thing. And the fuel level, if it is not already, is undoubtedly fundamental if you don't have it. I used to know, basically to know if I had water left or not, I had to wait for the water to stop coming out of the tap, and then I would change from one tank to another, or and I knew that soon I was going to have to refill. Now I feel much more comfortable. I can control much more how much water I have in the boat. One important thing is that this is probably one of the easiest DIYs we have done. As a first step for you to venture out and do this kind of thing, it can be a good way to go. Doing it yourselves is not that you are going to save a lot of money, especially in this one, but one of the most important things is that you are going to get two things out of it. One, the pride of doing it yourselves, knowing that you have done it yourselves and a much better mastery or a much deeper knowledge of your boat than when you are in port and everything is fine, it's not a problem. But when you are out at sea a few miles away, you feel very lonely. And if you have a problem, you are going, you are going to have to know how to solve everything. So I hope you liked this week's video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. You can recommend us to any of your friends. The truth is that we need new subscribers like a breath of fresh air. So we look forward to see you in a new episode of The Low Cost Sailor.